Hello, everybody. What is up? For those of you who do not know, my name is Zach Moss. I'm currently trying to get my PhD studying international affairs and political science. Now, in an attempt not to go totally insane during this quarantine, I decided to do a little hot take on what's currently going on in the political system. Okay, so right now, apparently, there's a coalition of different groups that represent the young voice, and they came out with different terms and conditions. They want uh, former Vice President uh, Joe Biden what they want him to follow in order to get the young vote. With that said, I would be very interested to see kind of what your guys' take on this is. Do you agree with what they're saying? Do they represent your voice? And if you're older, uh, a part of the older population, do you think these things are reasonable, yes or no? So let's jump right into this. Oh, and before I forget, the reason why this is relevant is because right now Biden is actually tied with Trump for the under 35 vote. So like the overall polling system show that they're both polling pretty poorly. So it's kind of like, Who's going to be the one to accommodate them first? We shall see. All right. Now, according to The Hill, the Alliance for Youth Action, Justice Democrats, the March for Our Lives Action Fund, Next Gen America, Student Action, the Sunrise Movement, the If Not Now Movement, and United We Dream Action immediately sent an open letter yesterday to Biden's campaign offering concrete, tangible commitments he can make and actions he can take to earn the trust of the vast majority of voters under 45 who rejected his return to normalcy message. Alrighty, so we got the point. Now, what specifically are they supporting? Number one, and I'm I'm summarizing all of this stuff for you guys, so you don't have to read the long, you know, open letter. But anyway, Green New Deal, ten trillion dollars over ten years, so a trillion dollars a year. And what their their goal of that is to essentially have a hundred percent renewable technology for electricity buildings and transportation, which we can get it. Pre it's already been proven. We could get pretty close to hundred percent if we really wanted to. And then that'll lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs. Now, in addition to that as well, this coalition wants the prosecution of fossil fuel industry executives and lobbyists for crimes against humanity. This one's freaking hilarious, by the way. Good, good. The amount of carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere by these organizations that know damn well exactly what they're doing. Did you guys know, just a little side rant, and I, I'm trying to like tone down a little side rants and not get too crazy, okay? Like that's kind of my goal here. So not, I don't like those videos that get really yelly, you know? But we give $990 million to ExxonMobil, which is for research and development, which is currently number one in their field in the world. And they aren't even creating mass green technology, innovative, things and we're giving them 990 million dollars a year think of the things that you could spend with 990 million dollars that's all i'm saying so in terms of prosecution good literally everybody should be supporting that one okay now let's go to gun violence prevention so they want to reduce gun violence by 50 percent within 10 years and they also support something called the Peace Plan for Safer America by March for Our Lives. So they're the ones who came up with this idea. What this entails is higher standards for gun safety, like requiring licenses. Because, well, I mean, like, let's be honest here. You don't need a license to buy a gun or to shoot a gun, but you need one to drive. Like, <laughs> like can we all agree that's kind of ridiculous? Now, for those of you, like I, I myself, I do own a few guns. Now, the ridiculous aspect of this is the fact that if you're pro-gun, then if you don't suck at using the guns, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about because this is essentially making sure that the people who have the guns are aware of safety precautions. For example, don't look down the barrel of the gun or don't be like, hey, look at this gun and point it at them. These are things that are very easy to understand. The only people who should be worried about this are the dummies who don't know how to operate guns. We can all agree on that one. So, so far, it looks like we should all be agreeing on this. Next, it says, have the IRS probe the, the NRA over their nonprofit status. All right. Next, adopt Julian Castro's people first policing plan. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm trying to keep it like as real as possible, even though there's a lot of people on the left who are support, supporting certain things and people on the right support certain things. And even the alternative media, they're also kind of supporting similar policies. And a lot of times they really do support it. And sometimes they're just supporting it out of peer pressure. This one is kind of weird to me because it's so goddamn, it's so vague. Like, it's so vague. For example, restrict the use of deadly force. 
so what the hell does that mean? Because you're going to have people coming out and are saying, well, hold on a second here. With police officers, hypothetically, they're supposed to only be using deadly force when they have to if it's a life-threatening situation. So if you come out and say, restrict the use of deadly force, they're going to come out and say, you sound like a bunch of dumb bitches who don't know what they're talking about. Why should we provide any sort of justification for what you're saying? Or validation, excuse me. Why should we validate anything you're saying if you're not coming out with specific policy substances because you're sounding like you don't know what you're talking about? So that's, that's I'm not going to go too much in detail about what Julian Castro is proposing because again, the lack of details is a bit startling for myself in particular. However, there was a couple interesting notes, like for example, adopt more technological approaches, for example, body cams. Did you guys know, by the way, did you guys know that only 40% of the police departments in the United States use body cams? That's a por- according to the U.S. Department of Justice. I didn't know that. I thought it was going to be substantially more, but now that I hear about that, I'm like, yeah, that would probably be a pretty good thing to start to adopt. Now, he also wants to end stop and frisk policies, so that's pretty beneficial, Other than that, I'm just going to stop talking about that because unless they come out with more policy specifics, it just sounds like a bunch of bullshit ideals and it, it doesn't hold a lot of weight. Next, we have immigration. So expand DACA and kids with cages, you know, don't even need to get into that situation. We all know what's going on there and make immigration courts free of political manipulation. This one's kind of interesting because... I agree, and I think we should all agree that the court system should be running independently, not based off of what our political leaders want to do, even though they're the ones that create the policy. Just a little food for thought. I'm not really proving a point with this part in particular, but just so you guys know, I mean, Obama, he deported more people than Bush. Granted, he also expanded, like he created the DACA program, right? And so there's that, but he also deported 1.18 million people. Trump is trying to end DACA, which he has been for years now, and he's getting a little bit closer to doing so, but he's only deported 800,000. So let's just put a little perspective on that and saying that, look, even both sides, like political manipulation is kind of bullshit regarding this. Okay, on top of that, they want to repeal the 1996 immigration reform laws. This is kind of a hard thing to talk about because there's just so many nuances. For example, the 1996 immigration reform laws made it so you can punish individuals who overstay their visas by requiring them to stay out of the country for a certain amount of time. For example, like if you overstayed your visa by a year, you have to stay like, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I think it's like three years out of the out of the country. And if you're here for a couple of years, then you have to stay 10 years out of the country, those sorts of things. In addition to that as well, there's harsher penalties for the, the individuals who come here illegally. And if they get into trouble here or they try to do human trafficking, there's harsher penalties. So when we're talking about repealing the 1996 immigration reform laws, they should be a little bit more specific as to what they're talking about here. Because if you're talking about making sure that people follow the law, that's kind of important. And so if you're talking about repealing certain aspects like, hey, um, yes, we should have penalties for people who are you know, illegally trafficking people here, like sex trafficking, kind of important. And so they need to specify specifically what they're talking about if they want to add a little bit more legitimacy behind their cause. That's all I'm saying. Next, healthcare, Medicare for all, lower drug prices, and repeal the Heidi Amendment. Essentially what the Heidi Amendment is, is it cuts federal funding for abortions. So they're saying, hey, abortion is a, essentially it's, it's a right for your health and they, the, they being the government, they should help fund women to protect their health. So that's what it's saying. Next, you have the criminalization, the criminalization category. This one's also pretty vague. So this is another one where I'm like, guys, like, come on, like you got to get your shit together because you're not just trying to stand for the younger vote. You're trying to add legitimacy behind your cause and that's going to take everybody. So one thing that they want to do, for example, is cut prison population by 50% while reinvesting into drug rehab centers, diversion, education, and health programs. Like, that's cool. And I obviously, like, of course, I support those sorts of things. And it's a part of ending the war on drugs. But like, when they're saying stuff like, cut the prison population by 50%, my first thought is, how are you going to do that? Well, like, I get it. You're going to invest more into drug rehab centers, diversion, and those sorts of things. But like, are we talking 50% in the next hundred years? Or are you talking something radical, like 50% by 2035? Because I've heard that year being thrown out a few times in this open letter. 
Like, what what are you guys trying to say here? Because that's going to dictate, again, whether or not people take you seriously. The other thing that they're supporting is the legalization of marijuana, which a long majority of Americans support. So Biden, even though you're a longtime advocate for the war on drugs and you don't support the legalization of weed, if you're trying to get bipartisan support, maybe you should support this along with Medicare for all because of the fact that a lot of people care about this and you'll get bipartisan consensus on this. Just a thought. Next, you have education, universal college education for undergraduates. So the first four years. And I would probably add a trade school equivalent if it's not already paid for. And then he also wants to cancel, or the open letter they're saying to cancel student debt. Finally, we only have a couple left here, but the other one is the wealth tax. So increase the tax on the top 1% as laid out by Sanders, Warren, and Steyer, or Steyer, 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 however you say it. And so that would be essentially the top 0.1% would be whoever makes $32 million or above that. And so essentially, hypothetically, you'd be making in the next 10 years an estimated $4.35 trillion. Last two we have is foreign policy. So mandatory congressional approval for war. So the president can't just say, hey, we're going to be going into Africa and then we're going to stay in Africa for a decade because I kind of want to go into Africa and it sounds kind of nice. In addition to that, repeal the authorization for the use of military force, which that says that the authorization was pretty much saying that the U.S. can attack anybody who was a part of the 9-11 events. The problem with that is you have to repeal that because what's going on is our government is manipulating this authorization to send our troops overseas to pretty much die in wars that we shouldn't be fighting for, they shouldn't be risking their lives for, and people who are in those countries don't even want us to be there. So why are we risking our lives for people who don't want us to be there? And literally security policy is my shit. We increase radicalization with the increase in occupation in countries. So if we care about our soldiers' lives, if we care about the money and we care about the civilians, we probably shouldn't be there. Therefore, we have to end this justification that the U.S. government uses, which is the authorization for the use of military force. So good enough, coalition. I support you on that one. And last but not least, we have democracy, which is and filibusters get money out of politics so we can start focusing on the wishes of the American people as opposed to the corporations and automatic voter registration. So you don't have to go through all these different processes to register. Instead, you're automatically registered and then it's easy to vote. And then if we can go to mail in ballots as well, that would be, you know, pretty, uh, pretty perfect. Anyway, guys, again, how do you feel about this situation that we're in? How do you feel about what the coalition is saying? Do you support it? Do you not? Was that boring? Do you find it to be irrelevant? I don't know. You can either hit me up in the comment section or on Twitter at ZachMoss6. Anyway, guys, live long and prosper. Have fun in quarantine or don't regardless. Um, peace out.